this is Chuck, a um, software engineer at Hypar. He graduated with a Bachelor of Architecture and has been writing software for, ev for AEC ever since. Today, he will showcase NodePen, which was powered by Speckle. Welcome, Chuck. How are you? I'm doing well. Hello. How are you? Good, good. Uh, I'll bring on your, your screen if you have your slides ready. Okay, fantastic. Um, so, hello everyone. Um, my name is Chuck. Um, I'm a software engineer at Hypar. Um, and today I'll be talking about uh, NodePen. Um, NodePen is a place for making and sharing Grasshopper scripts um, online. Um, but uh, and I've been working on it um, for uh, quite some time um, at this point. Uh, and the tagline has always been the same. Um, we're doing Grasshopper online. Um, and the status of the project has always been some version of it's doing things, um, but it's not quite done. Um, and that's left me uh, with the impression of kind of representing the exact same thing every single time. Um, but today uh, will be no different. Um, well, there's, there's some important differences. Um, thanks to Speckle, we've crossed a milestone where I don't feel like I'm lying anymore when I say we're doing Grasshopper online. Um, we're able to support the entire standard component library um, and, in theory, the plugins. Um, and it, it feels like I don't have to hand wave uh, so much. Um, and so today I'd like to talk a little bit about how we got there um, and a little more specifically about what Speckle is doing um, in order to uh, why I'm a bit of a fan today um, and why it's possible because of Speckle. Um, so NodePen began in 2019, um, right after I had graduated. Um, I was looking for a project that combined technical things I knew um, right, in Grasshopper um, and technical things that I wanted to know, um, like web development um, and everything in order to that. Um, I knew I wanted to be a software developer of some kind. Um, and about a year prior, uh, I had seen that something like Grasshopper on the web um, was possible um, at the TTAC Tech Hackathon. Um, I watched Sergey and Emil grapple with um, kind of a debut for Rhino Compute, um, where they managed to wrangle it and grab a Grasshopper script from a browser, solve it, and send back the results. Um, so I knew something like this was, you know, in in the realm of possibility, even without fully understanding what what that meant or how it could be done. Um, and this version didn't do too much more than that, um, but it continued to reaffirm, like, hey, like, we can do it. This is something interesting and uh, something that we can pursue. Um, and so the next version over the next year um, was purely an educational exercise um, in kind of picking up different parts of the problem of Grasshopper online um, and just trying to do them, even if just like for a cursor example. I'm like, what if we could see the same script over two browsers, browser windows, one in the 3D model view, one in the actual script view, kind of like you see on Grasshopper itself, right? Um, none of it did everything well, but a lot of things were shown as like technically possible. Um, but then something kind of terrible happened. Um, I started getting attention, right? I'm talking about this publicly. Um, I'm talking about these little things that I'm doing. Um, and people online are saying things like, this is cool. I want to see if you could do X. I want to see if you could do Y. Um, and let's be clear, like, like people online was like maybe three or four people on Twitter. But at this point in my life, it's the most attention I've ever gotten on something that I actually was like genuinely obsessed with. Um, and for some reason, I took the leap there um, to, well, that means you have a product on your hands, right? Um, and so the next version uh, did just that. Um, it dressed up the editor that I had and the tech that I had um, as a product, right? You had sign in, you had sign out, you had ways to create Grasshopper scripts and like actually share them with links, which again was like a technically uh, interesting problem for me. Um, but a few important things happened when we did get here and we did put this out to the world. Um, and the first was that I connected a few, a few dots, um, right? That when you say you're making a product, you're probably saying that you're selling something. Um, and if you say that you're selling something, you, you probably are saying that you're asking people for money, right? And this is not something I'd ever thought about with this project and certainly wasn't something um, that I had a good answer to. Um, so that was tough, right? It's tough questions that needed to be answered if it was to be a product. Um, but more importantly, at the same time, um, Grasshopper 2 happened, right? Um, Grasshopper, if only in name, uh, a totally new, exciting piece of software, um, but different. Right. And so if I was to say that I was doing Grasshopper online, it suddenly meant at least two things. And the project was already too difficult for me to shoulder. Um, I am excited about Grasshopper too, to be clear. Um, but it's very tragic at this point in time. 
Um, so I'm complaining about this to a friend of mine probably for the third time that week um, around when all this is happening. Um, and he sat me down and he was like, he said, he said, please do anything else. Like, take a break. Um, right. This was becoming too much. I had a full-time job on top of all of this, right? Like another ambitious project in high farm. Um, and so we did just that. Um, we took a break. Um, uh, the problem is um, I really do love this project. Um, I want to see it real. I want to see it in people's hands. I want, I'd, I would hate for this to be part as something that was interesting to me and just kind of happened. Um, but you know, uh, the, the laundry list of technical problems I needed to solve um, was a little bit too long, right? You know, I'm generating a bunch of Rhino geometry, a bunch of 3D geometry, um, and I needed a place to park it. I needed a place to store my 3D geometry. Um, and then after that, I kind of needed a way to uh, query it, to interact with it. Um, I needed a way to ask questions of my 3D data um, and see how it related to different parts of the 3D data. Um, and of course, I needed to view it. Um, I really wanted to generate all this 3D data and see it. That's why we're doing Grasshopper, right? That's why we're here. Um, and it would have been really nice if all of that data um, came on a bit of a timeline and how it related to changes to the Grasshopper graph um, over time. Um, yeah, bad acting, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, if only that were possible. Um, and then we finally connected the dots um, to Speckle, um, right? Uh, it was almost frustrating for me to, to see this connection and realize just how great of an overlap the Speckle stack had with the goals and the technical requirements of NodePen. Um, and, you know, the rest is history. And here I am today talking about why I'm such a fanboy um, and why the project is real thanks to Speckle. Um, and seeing as it's developer day, I wanted to get a little bit more specific about what Speckle is doing, um, right? The job has always been very simple um, in, in, this, in description. Generate a script, solve it, and get the results back. Um, and uh, to add a little bit more resolution, um, the front end tasks are split in kind of two categories. Um, the first is the graph editor itself. It's the thing that's responsible for making the script, uh, describing it in JSON and sending it down to the server. Um, by the time we get to the back end and actually need to solve it, it's pretty much Rhino Compute Show, right? You take the, the Grasshopper script in JSON, you turn it into a Grasshopper script, you pass it off to Rhino to solve it, and you store the results. Um, and then the viewer half is the 3D viewer, right? And I, I want to actually um, see my results in a way that are visual, right? It's why, it's why anyone does Grasshopper, right? We're trying to generate geometry, we want to see it. Um, and so that's more or less what the task has been. Um, but to talk about Speckle, I also wanted to add a little bit more resolution that viewing kind comes in two important categories. Um, of course, there's the 3D viewer, um, but there's also the viewing that happens when, say, you hover over a parameter and you want to see a specific value, or the viewing that happens when you have a panel, right? When you have that sort of tabular-esque um, way that you want to look at your 3D geometry, maybe as a text or maybe as some sort of description, um, right? So these, these are all the kind of things that needed to happen. Um, in order to give the impression that you were doing Grasshopper from the browser. Um, and each of them have their own full set of problems. Um, traditionally, this has all been NodePen's job, um, right? Uh, there's a very important top right corner there um, where Rhino Compute is doing the real work, um, where Rhino Compute is doing Grasshopper, right? And everything else is kind of dressing around it to, to generate and shuttle data um, between different places. Um, and thanks to Speckle, my job has been cut in more than half. Right. Um, as it's developer day, I'm sure many of you know, um, Speckle provides a beautiful suite um, of APIs and libraries to park your data, inspect with it, inspect it in some way. Um, and the 3D viewer is just like um, gorgeous. Right. Um, the GraphQL API is used to great effects in the current versions of NodePen um, to when you do hover over a parameter, ask a very specific question of like, this bit of geometry on this component, on this parameter, and like just the top 10, or like just some, some subset. Um, and as a developer, um, it's been incredibly uh, fun uh, to, to use this set of tools that was just ready to go um, to solve so many problems that I was, I was, I was fearing um, I'd have to somehow figure out um, on my own. Um, and thanks to that, um, uh, NodePen as it stands is back online again today, um, but we'll get back to that in a second um, because I'd like to talk about um, where it's going. Right, I kind of just poured my heart out to you about what, what has happened, or where are things going? Um, and the problem is that I, I genuinely don't know. Um, but there's a few things that I do know uh, uh, are real and need to happen. Um, we're pumping the brakes. Um, NodePen, if it's meant to be Grasshopper Online, should do Grasshopper Online before anything else. Um, right? Uh, it should solve the scripts reliably. It should solve them quickly.
quickly enough, right? Um, I don't know if I'll ever be able to achieve the fun of like running a number slider and seeing the results dance and react immediately when it's all in your machine, but we'll get as close as we can, right? Um, and I think there's a lot of, of wins to be had already with just like the, the node pen as it is online today. Um, and that definitely plugins. If we figure that out, if that happens, um, there's a whole world of exciting things um, that, that always seem within reach and have sometimes tempted me to try a bit early, um, right? The saving and sharing, the embeddable viewers. And, and maybe maybe we do want to look at Grasshopper scripts on our phone in some universe. Um, but for now, Speckle has made things real enough that I get to focus on uh, delivering the fundamental promise of Grasshopper online um, for real um, and focus on that. Um, so there's the link. NodePen is online right now. If you'd like to give it a try and play with it, no bells and whistles, actually quite fragile. Um, if all of you were to jump on and do this right now, I am not sure what would happen, um, but it's real. Um, I promise it's real. I just checked before the presentation. It is working um, and it's there and it feels great to say um, and it feels great to talk about. Um, you know, like, like if NodePen is to become something special or you know, like if this project is to become something finished, um, it's going to be because of Speckle. Um, so thank you to Speckle um, for existing um, and for having me today to talk about it. Um, and thank you all for listening to me talk about something that uh, I care about quite a bit. Um, it's a fun project. It's a fun crew. Um, thank you. Thanks so much, Chuck. Uh, it's great to, to hear your feedback as well. There's one question from Lewis. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, I don't know. I, that's a good setup. I didn't, I didn't react fast enough because I wanted to cry a little bit. Yeah, there's so many. <laughs> there's so many. Um, but I don't know if I ever am I going to be able to leave Grasshopper. It's, it's the reason I knew this is happening to me. Um, I love it quite a bit. Um, probably always will. So, also, hello. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. And obviously, if there's more questions coming, um, I think you're... You're watching live, hopefully, so you can answer them uh, directly. Absolutely. And yeah. we'll see you around. Thanks. Uh, thanks again. Yeah. Bye. Right. Bye.